Hi, I'm Roland. This video lesson is about an algorithm that is used for string matching using a finite state automaton. There are many different string matching algorithms. You may ask, why do we need another? The reason is that each algorithm designed to provide a solution to the string matching problem performs differently under different circumstances. As always, in computer science, we want to make sure that a particular algorithm or program runs as fast as possible. So in order to decide which algorithm to use, we need to examine the type of input used. If you want to perform matching of a short string as a one-off, the naive method seems perfectly good. But if you want to search for a pattern that is derived from a large input alphabet, such as natural languages, the BMH algorithm could provide a good solution. If the alphabet is small and repetitions are likely to occur in the text, the KMP algorithm is ideal. These algorithms are good at performing matching of finite length strings. But what if you want to search for something more complex, such as a non-finite regular expression? That is where string matching with finite automaton can provide the necessary solution. From here on, I will refer to the finite state automaton SDFA, which stands for Deterministic Finite State Automata, which is essentially the same thing. String matching with DFA is used wherever a regular expression is searched, such as in Unix tools like grep, in library catalog searches, or in compilers where string matching is done to identify tokens of syntax. The running time of this algorithm is made up of two parts. First, the preprocessing, which is the actual generation of the DFA and the transition table. And secondly, the matching. As we can see here, matching runs in constant time per text character, which is of theta n. After processing has been done, that means each character of the text is only examined once. This is really good. However, the execution of the first stage can take some time, depending on the size of the input alphabet and the method used to generate the transition table. The stated running time of the pre-processing step can however be reduced to big O n times the size of the input alphabet by generating the transition table of the DFA during execution with the prefix function similar to what KMP algorithm uses. But that is for another day. Before we examine how the algorithm works, let's quick up on what the DFA is. Here we can see an automaton that accepts any string that contains the substring ABB. OK, so a DFA has five necessary properties. It has to contain some states. One of those has to be the start state. It has to have at least one accept state. Its input is defined by a finite alphabet and it makes these transitions according to the transition function. The inputs to the transition function are characters of the alphabet and the current state, while the output is the next transition state according to those inputs. For every desired pattern we would like to search in a text, there is possible to generate a DFA that recognizes that pattern. This is of course subject to both pattern and text belonging to the same alphabet and the pattern not being longer than the text itself. The length of the pattern is directly related to the number of states the string matching DFA has. The state corresponding to the first character is the start state, while the state corresponding to the last character match is the only accept state. In order to perform the string matching, first we have to build the DFA, which is done by generating the transition table of the automaton. The transition table is generated by this code. Let's examine what each line of this pseudocode does. Line 1 assigns the length of the pattern to the variable m. The number of states will be determined by the value of m. Lines 2 and 3 run this function through each state for each character, while lines 4 to 6 generate the match, which correspond to the longest prefix of the pattern that is also the suffix of the string read so far. In other words, k is the state representing the successfully matched pattern up to its kth character. 
Fly7 generates a transition function delta for step k, while the final line, line 8, returns the computed function delta. The time complexity analysis of the function is on screen. After the transition table has been constructed by the previous method, matching of the pattern against the input text string is very efficient. It runs in theta n times. As mentioned before, each character of the text is only considered once as the algorithm progresses. On line 1, we assign the length of the text string to n, and we will use this value to generate the for loop conditions for running through the text characters on line 3. Line 2 makes the process start as the start state. Line 4 returns the values computed by the transition function generator, which I use to make the transition through the DFA. On the next line, if the transitions progress all the way to the accept state, that means that a match is found. At this point, the match is printed and stated within the program that is found as shift i minus m. After a match is found, the algorithm continues to find remaining matches within the remaining text string. Let's now consider a concrete example so we can visualize more easily how the algorithm works. On the top right hand side is a transition table that has been generated by the transition function generator method. This table is the basis for the constructed DFA scene on screen. You may notice that not every state has an outgoing transition for each of the characters of the alphabet. That is because by convention the, transition, uh, the transitions which return to the start state are not included. Here you can see the text string and the pattern we try to match. C plus means that after the first two characters, A and B, the pattern is allowed to contain one or more number of C characters before the final A and B. This C plus expression introduces this non-final property to this particular regular expression. Because of that property, the pattern string can be string matched with our DFA. First, we encounter a C character, which is not the first character of our pattern, therefore, according to our transition table, we stay in state 0. The next character is B, which is also no matches with the pattern, so we read of the table that from state 0 with a B, we should stay in state 0. Next up is an A, which is good news because we found our first match. We can read of the table that from state 0, by reading an A, we can move to the next state, state 1. The next character is also a match, so we make transition to state 2. In order to continue to successfully match the next character, we need to read the C. However, we encounter another A, so by the table, we revert to state 1. The next one is B, so we make that transition from 1 to 2 again. The next character is C, which is good, because that's what we need towards finding a match. The next one is also a C, but in this case we stay in state 3 as long as we see consecutive C's. Here we see another C. The next character is an A, so we can continue to progress to state 4. Now, if we are to find a successful match, we need to see a B, so we can make our final transition to the final state, state 5. And that is, that is what we have. Because we progress to the final state, we manage to find a match. That's it. Hope that makes sense and that gives you some help. Thanks very much. Bye.